Hey, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a great day, a blessed day, and getting 1% better than yesterday, breaking free from whatever's holding you back and enjoying the process. I'm doing the same. We can be free right now. We can be in nirvana right now, right where we are, as long as we don't object to it. I love that idea. And today I wanted to talk about how to stop living paycheck to paycheck, which is definitely going to set you free. I also wanted to talk about nine ways to spend time with your kids for free or for cheap that we like to do, and also a quick happiness tip that I've been loving lately. Before I get into that, I did get right out there in Instacart this this morning. I was hoping to get more. I made $39 and like 80 cents, so close to 40, which I'm trying to talk myself into is okay. I was out there and I was going to do a batch. It was a triple order for 23 bucks and the app just was not loading. I noticed on the way to the store, I actually sat there for like 20 minutes, wasn't going, finally came up, went into the store and it was freezing. Luckily, I was only like one or two things in my cart and I just said, the heck with this. So I went home, contacted the support and they were nice and said it was like a global issue. It does happen from time to time. I still got paid for the order minus tip, which got me to 40 for the day. And I just said the heck with it for today. I've got other things to do. I'll let the app chill out for a minute. So I'm at 235. I want to get to 300 by tomorrow. Um, I might have to have some lawn mowing money get me there. Even if I can make 50 or 40 tomorrow, that will get me close to 300, this being a short week. I also tried to do a gratitude journal short today. It's still waiting or uploading. Who knows if it will go through. I hope it does, but I did try. So let's get into the topics for today. Um, how to stop living paycheck to paycheck. And this is something that if you're feeling, it's not good. And if you don't feel it, it's, it's a great feeling. So let's try to get there. I was there and now I'm not. So let's talk a little bit about this. Before you start any of this, track your spending because without it, none of these four steps are really going to be possible. Track your spending. I didn't even know about tracking your spending. I barely knew about a budget that I didn't use. Tracking your spending is so eye-opening. It's just like reviewing your day. You, you review your day. You know what to improve upon. You track your spending. You know where you can make cuts and what is not necessary. So number one, track your spending. It's, it's very eye-opening. And that was one of the first things we did on our break free from debt journey. Number two, cut up your credit cards. I did not have a massive credit card problem. Um, I used all cash. I was just um, a waiter with no financial knowledge. I got paid in cash and I paid in cash. Um, you know, my wife though, credit cards were a bit of an issue and there was a lot of debt racked up on those cards. And I was always wondering how there was no money left to be saved. And we really didn't figure that out until our meeting. That can break up marriages. Um, it did not to ours, it made ours stronger. And I was very calm. When that came to light, I was a little upset and a little shocked, but I was like, damn. But I, I felt like I had the key to life. I had the, something, some knowledge, some great power that had just awoken in me that I knew we'd be okay. I knew we could turn this around. And, you know, she was in tears and we cut up the credit cards, um, took no more loans and took on no more debt. And, and from that moment on until now, credit cards have not been a part of our life. Um, number two, start saving today for an emergency fund. Try for 50 bucks every paycheck. Try for 100. Um, because that will smooth out your finances a little bit. If emergency comes up, hopefully you can pay for it with that. If you can't find that $50, if you can't find that $100, this is where tracking your spending comes in. Cut all discretionary spending. And what could that be? That could be vices. That could be going to the bar. It could be gambling. It could be cigs. It could be alcohol. It could be coffees, junk food, going out to eat, new toys, um, clothing, books, concerts, take that money and put it into your savings. Cut, 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 and cut some more until you can get that emergency fund built and start paying off your debt. And the way you're going to pay off your debt is going to be a debt snowball. I did some research. There's two methods, the debt snowball, which we've talked about in this channel and what I've used, and the debt avalanche. 
The debt avalanche is technically the financial wiser way because you're paying off the highest interest rate first, but the debt snowball is, I think, the most successful psychological way because you can see yourself making progress and it will motivate you to keep going. So for the debt snowball, which I would recommend and which I used, you add up, you list your balances from the lowest uh, debt balance to the highest and you attack the lowest first. Attack it, attack it, attack it. Okay, it's paid off. Congrats. You're on your way. And then take all that money that you put into the first and roll it into the second one. Paid off. Okay, they rolled into the third one, and we had multiple cards um, that we had to do that too. So that is the four steps to stop living paycheck to paycheck, and that is going to help you tremendously on your debt-free, on your break-free journey, and of course your debt-free journey. The second topic of today: nine ways to that we spend um, time with our kids for free or for cheap. There's things that we spend with them that are not necessarily always free or cheap, but these are the ways we most, most of the time that we do. Um, number one, go to the playground. There's a playground right down the street from us. The playground might as well be Disneyland for them. They love it. Uh, there's nothing better. Number two, walks. I just would always love to go for walks with them. Even when they were babies, pushing them in the stroller, I was just a proud dad and I was getting my exercise in. Now they ride bikes, so we go for bike rides around the neighborhood and it's pretty cool because that's where I used to ride bikes too. And I kind of point out some of the places where I used to hang out or some of the places that don't exist anymore. Yes, I'm so old that the playground that I grew up on is not even there anymore. But man, we had some good times. Number three, board games. They love Sorry and they love Clue. Or no, they love Sorry and they love Guess Who as well as multiple other games. But they do love board games. Um, teach them chess. The kids love chess. They're fiends. They, I hate to say it, they can beat me. They've beaten me before. I don't know. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Um, they beat me at chess. Number five, video games. Now, this is something we just got them, and they are massive readers, and they like they have a tablet that they play on, and they play this learning game Prodigy online. But I really wanted them to know what an original NES was, and I can remember playing that with my parents, um, Super Mario 1, and they have these little corny little platformer games on their tablet that is reminds me of Nintendo. You know, it's they're like that style. I was like, man, they'll have so much fun with it. So for the birthday and just for them, we got them an original Nintendo with Mario. And that also made me happy too. And it makes them happy. They do enjoy it. So we do play some Nintendo lately together. Uh, build with Legos. They love Legos. They build their own creations. Occasionally they'll get the sets, you know, the sets are expensive, but they'll get them for their birthday or Christmas, uh, really not outside of that, and they'll build those, but then, you know, they're nine and they're eight and they're seven and they just throw them all into a bin and then they just build stuff up too, so we have fun doing that. Uh, number seven, basketball. We, we have a hoop in our backyard, there's not much room, but that was something that was important for me to, to show them that sport and, and they like it. Uh, they love soccer. That's their main sport right now, too. That's number eight. Uh, we do little soccer things in the backyard, and our neighbor has a a bigger flat yard that they're fine with the girls running around in, so play some soccer together. And nine, tell stories. I think it's cool. I love when they tell me stories. I love when they make up stories. And I love when I tell them stories. And they, every night when I get out of work, probably as a ploy now to not go to bed, I'll come in the door and they'll come running downstairs on a school night, whether it's 8.39 or 9.30. They're a bit of a night owl. We get them up there early, trust me, 7.30, 7.45. And they just read, 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 wait till I get home. And I'll come upstairs and I'll start to get ready. Dad, tell us a story about anything, about when you were a kid, about your day, um, about great-grandparents who are no longer around. Just story, Dad, story, Dad. And I can't always think of one, but I try my best. And... Sometimes we tell the same story or sometimes we'll look at a video or a picture of them from the past, but they always want to know stories and I think that's cool. And I, I wish I had time to ask my great grandparents more stories and I probably should ask my parents about more stories too. And the third topic for today, a happiness tip, smile at strangers. We've talked about it before since the masks have come off, especially as a waiter dealing with the public service industry, making people happy. I like to smile. I like to smile at them, make a connection with them. But not only that, but 
strangers in a store, smile at strangers, maybe the person walking past you on the sidewalk, the person in the grocery store, which I am often in Instacarting. Um, how often do we blow past people with a straight face or a scowling face or a frown face or a blank face? Um, you know, I like to give them a little smile, genuinely look them in the eye and, uh, you know, that's nice. It makes me feel good. Hopefully it makes them feel good. So that's uh, today's topics on the break free journey. I'm excited for work tonight. I'm also excited. This is a short week and I have some friend time coming up this weekend. I can't wait to talk to you guys on the next video. Let me know how you're doing in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and I will be talking to you soon. Break free.